Arrival of Tub II in Medina Tub II, Tuban Asad Abikarb, is the person who came to Medina and constructed Allah's house in Mecca. He dressed the Allah's house. He took two Jews with him to Yemen. He made a road from Yemen to Medina. He used to use this passage. He was the ruler before Rabia ibn Nasr. It is narrated that when he came for the first time from East Yemen to Medina, when he passed near the city, he was pleased here. So he left here his son, who was killed by mistake. Abu Karb Tuban became furious to fight with the army of Medina. Further, there was another mishap which made him more furious. The matter was that a man who called Ahmer, who belonged to Abi bin Alanjar family, who came in his garden of date palm and killed Tuban man who was there. This event made Tuban more furious. The result was war. They fought these people at the day and at night. These people host them. Tubi was impressed by the act of people of Medina whom he considered enemy. Now he became pleased with these people. At this time, two Medina's Jews who belonged Bani Quraz came to see Tubi. They guessed he might kill the people of Medina. It was told from Ibn Kaab from Hadrat Ibn Abbas Ibn Sa'ad narrated that when Tubi came to Medina, he stayed at Kanata. He sent his message to the Jewish scholar that I am going to destroy this city. Samul, who was a great scholar, said, said to him that this was the city where Muhammad would migrate. He was belonging to the family of the Prophet Ismail. His name would be Ahmad. This place would be his migrated place. The place where you had your stay would be the battlefield of him and his enemies. To be asked, to him, who would fight him? Samuel answered that his people would fight him. Where would be his tomb? He answered that it would be in the city. What would be the result of his fight? He questioned to Samuel. He would win the battle, and sometime his enemy would be the winner. Where you stand now was the place of his friend's grave. At least he would be the winner of battle, and then he was ruling. There would be nobody who would be against him. Tub asked him that how he would be. Samuel described that he would be a suitable height with rosy shade eyes. He would ride on his camel, have turban, have sword on his shoulder. He would not care his enemy, be whether his cousin or uncle or both. Ibn Zafar narrated from Hadrat Sufyan bin Majasha that they saw the people of the meme who gathered before a soothsayer. She said that anyone who will love him will be honoured, anyone who will reject him will be disgraced. He who will have tenderness will be healthy, he will be destroyed, he who will have fury. Hadrat Sufyan asked her, who is for whom you are talking? She answered him that I talk about the man who will have difference between legal and illegal. He will remove every sin, he is going to come, he will be prophet. His name will be Muhammad. Hadid Sufyan asked her that he will belong to Arab or non-Arab. She sought the sky and then said that he will belong to the Arabian. He will be awarded with the name Muhammad. All the mentioned events proved Muhammad. He will be descendant of Maad bin Adnan. Hadrat Amr bin Utba narrated in my childhood, I hated the idol worshipping. Then I met a man who belonged to a holy book religion, I asked him, what is a good religion? He answered to me that a man will appear from Mecca. He hated the idols of his nation. He will come with a good religion. When you will hear about him, you must believe on him. Now there is nothing of my life purpose except to see the man. So I came in Mecca and asked, is there occurred a new event? They answered to me, no. Then one day I sat on the way when I met a man who was coming from Mecca. I asked him about a new happening. He answered me, yes. I found a man who hates his nation's idols and presents a new religion. I told him that I was searching the man 
Then I met Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. I found that he hid himself from people. I questioned to him, "Who are you?" He told me that he is Allah's messenger. Who is messenger? I asked him. He sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam told me that he was sent from Allah. I asked again that with which you have been sent. He sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam answered me that he was sent with kindness, no bloodshed. make the way clean break the idols worship to one allah than others i said that you have been sent with sweet teachings i make you my witness that i accept you my prophet i verify you can i stay with you can you see the people are now hating my teachings so it is better for you to leave and come here when i shall migrate to yusrib madina it was fact that i went to him when he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam reached to medina abu naim and ibn asakar narrated from abu huraira that he found the news that the jews faced lost due to bakht e nasr when he was fallen and lost the jews used to find in their books that muhammad arabi came who will be kind for all the jews knew that the last prophet will come in the land of arabia where are date trees in dense the jews were in search of such city yusrib a tribe who belonged to them they searched of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam they knew that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was true they believe on him but at the end their race did not college abu naim narrated from hadrat hasan that he said i was at home I was 7 years old I kept in my mind what I listened or heard once I was with my father that we met a young man who was called Sabath bin Zahar who said that Banu Quraysh Jew debated me that a holy prophet is going to come he will have a book as we have he will kill you as Ad and Am were killed Hadrat Hasan narrated that by God I was on a high mount When I listened an announcement loudly at morning I did not listen such a loud call in my life that a Jew was standing on the mount and had a candle in his hands asked by people what you are doing he answered me that the star of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has risen this star comes up only at the time of prophet's appearance there was no prophet except muhammad the news made people laugh and astonish hadrat Hassan lived 120 years half past in ignorant and half in Islam Imam Waqti and Abu Naim narrated from Hadrat Hawasa bin Mas'ud that he said that among us lived the Jew they used to mention some prophet who will appear in Makkah and his name will be Ahmad and except him there is no prophet his description is here in our book even they told us all the figure of him sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam i was child at that time i remembered what i saw or i heard i heard a cry from banu abdul ashal all were astonished at this and thought that there would be some happened and then the call cut off we understood that call that someone was calling that oh yusrib this is the star of ahmed sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam who had become appeared in this world we were all surprised at this and then we held this after a time we forgot all this matter a nation passed then another and i became aged then i heard once again the same call o the people of yusrif muhammad arabi has come the crown of prophet has been blessed him for him came the same angel who came to moza alai islam then i heard that maka there is the birth of a certain man who claimed that he was a prophet some people came from my nation and some still and some drank islam and even he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam came abu naim narrated from abu said malak bin sanan that he heard from his father that his father told him that one day i went to banu abdul ashal so that i can gossip with him I heard from Yushaju said that a prophet is going to appear his name will be Ahmad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
His stay will be holy harm. He was asked about his description, answered, He that he will have suitable height, have reddish eyes, have some wrapping dress, ride camel, have side sword, this city will be his migrated city. I returned to my nation. It was a surprising. Someone said that this is not said by Yushe, but also all the Jews have same opinion. Then I met Banu Kuras. I saw him that the people gathered there and all were busy in talking about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Zubair bin Batuwa said that star has risen. It is used to appear at that time of prophets coming. This was the last star now, only Muhammad was to come. Ibn Asakar narrated that Abu Bakr accepted Islam due to the holy teaching when Hadrat Abu Bakr went to Syria for trade. He saw a dream. That dream was told by Sipai's man, Mon. He asked Abu Bakr anha, that, Where have ye come? Hadrat Abu Bakr answered that I belong to the Quraysh tribe. Asked what you are doing. He said trading. The monk suddenly said that Allah has been true your dream. Very soon a prophet is going to be in your nation. You will be his follower. After his death you will become caliph. Hadrat Abu Bakr has this secret to himself, not told to anyone till Hadrat Muhammad came. He asked that you have any proof. Hadrat Muhammad answered him that you can remind the dream of Syria. Now at this, Hadrat Abu Bakr accepts Islam. Abu Naim and Imam Bahki narrated from Afir bin Saif bin Zijazan that when Saif overcame Ethiopia, Hadrat Muhammad Sallallahu's age was six years. Some Arabian poets and leaders went to him and told that how he overcame this for his nation. The Quraysh tribe also went to him. This group include Abdul Mutlib bin Hashim, Umiya bin Abad Shams, Abdullah bin Jadan, Asad bin Abad Al Adi, Wahab bin Abad Manaf, and Qasi bin Abad Al Dar. When the permission was got from Saif, who was in his palace. About his palace, said Umiya bin Abi Salat al Sakfi that relished to take the bear in the palace. A crown decorated with jewels you wear, a decent house for you will be. Further said, take bear with comfort. The enemy were killed. Walk with grace with your two dress. These are the features which means that this is not the bowl of milk which makes pee after drinking. The king used pungent perfume. He was glad on his head used he a sweet white smell. He wore two dresses, one for covering the body and other for head. He held a sword in his front. Left and right he had ministers and leaders whom told about the status of Quraysh. When Hadrat Abdul Mutlib went near to the king and tried to get the permission for talking, the king said, if you have managed to talk with king, you took permission. Hadrat Mutlib said that, O oh Lord, you have high status. Live with zeal. May Allah bless you. Good fortune. You are a firm pillar of Arab. You people are good. You are the best for us. You are best guardian who is conscious of its subject. We are spy of the holy home. We have come due to your trouble which now has removed. We have come to congratulate you the then otherwise. The king asked him who you are. He answered him, I am Abdul Mutlib bin Hasim. At this, the king said, you are my maternal nephew. He said, yes, I am Abdul Mutlib. Come on. Now the king gave utmost attention and said, welcome. The king said that for you, a female camel with saddle is here. You can enjoy. The king has known you, offered you many presents, heard you talk. You are belonging me. You can live here as you want to stay here. When you will leave this place, you will be given many gifts. Then these people went to guest room. The king served them wholeheartedly. A month passed. The king was not in the mood of giving them permission, nor he could not meet them, but he gave them to their fill. One day he called for Abdul Mutlib. He closed him and said that I want to give you a secret. If here I find other, 
I never give this secret. The king has full confidence on you. Therefore, the king wants to share his secret. You must keep this and not mention to anybody. Even when the order from Allah received, I have kept this secret, it is notable that I kept this secret and you also. We used to have this secret and the book and did not talk about them. The knowledge we have is the knowledge for life. This faithfulness is better for you and your nation. Hadrat Abdul Muttalib said to the king that Allah may bless you forever. Now kindly mention the secret. The king said when a baby will bear in Tahama, the child will have a significant between his shoulders. He will be fortunate and you will have leadership for the end. I requested the king again that all the blessings will be for you. Kindly now tell me the full secret so that all my suspense will be low. The king said that maybe the child has born or will be very soon. His name will be Muhammad. His parents will be no more after the birth of Muhammad. He will be brought up by his uncle or grandfather. Allah must appear him. We will be with him. His enemy will be disgraced. He will have sword for jihad. He will take back the robbed riches. He will pray to Allah and remove satanic forces. He will remove fire worshipping. He will have solid argument. His orders will be final. He will say for kind and do good himself. He will put off bad deeds and stop himself in doing so. Your effort will be honoured. Your kingdom is forever, said Hadrat Abdul Muttalib to the king. Can you explain more? Mostly the fact is clear. Saif said that by curtain house, you are the grandfather of the child. I have no doubt in saying this. After listening this, Abdul Muttalib took a bow for Allah. Saif said that you might get your heart cold. Your dignity increases you. Can you feel after this? You told right. I am the grandfather of that child, my dear son was his father and his wife was Aman binte Wahab ta'ala anha. The child was born in their house. I named him Muhammad. His parents are passed away. I and his uncle are looking after him. Saif said that I have told you all. Save your grandson. The Jews are his enemy. But Allah is looking after him. So there is no need for that. Keep this secret to yourself. Not mention it to your company or others. There may be some people who will be envy and they will make many hurdles for him. The king wished that would that I would have more days my life to see Muhammad and go to your strip to tell the people to accept him as their prophet. Then the king has given them ten slave girls, ten black slaves and much more riches with 100 camels for every member of that caravan and the king gave Hadrat Abdul Muttalib 10 times more than all others with the command that you must see me the next year with that child and his doings but alas the king safe died before a year. Hadrat Abdul Muttalib called the people that you should not consider me that the king has given me more. You should be proud of me that I have something more which you will be awarded very soon. The riches will be finished one day except that. Imam Mahki narrated from Kulbi, Abu Salah and Hadrat Abbas anha. It was narrated from Abu Naim then Muhammad bin Umar that one day Hadrat Abdul Muslim sat in solitude room. Here he met priest who was his friend. He was talking him about the last prophet and then he said that we find the last prophet will be from the Ismail race. This will be his city. He described his description when he saw Muhammad and judged him and said, He is the last prophet. What is he to you? Hadrat Abdul Muttalib said that he is my son. The priest said no. Then Hadrat Abdul Muttalib said that he is my grandson. The priest said that his father has died till now. Hadrat Abdul Muttalib answered that when he was in his mother's womb, his father died. The priest said, you are right. Then Hadrat Abdul Muttalib said to his sons, O oh my sons, 
Have you listened what he said about him? Now protect him.